Hi, I'm Emily and I'm the Castle Girl. Today I'm at Linlithgow Palace. Linlithgow Palace is a ruined royal residence situated on top of a hilltop mound protruding into the banks of Loch Linlithgow. In the town of Linlithgow, which is in West Lothian, around 15 miles from the city of Edinburgh in Scotland. It was David I of Scotland that founded the borough of Linlithgow in the 12th century. And during that time, there may have been a royal manor house on the site. was later fortified by Edward I of England around 1301. He used the site as his headquarters, which was then known as the Peel, to lead his campaign against the Scots. The site was raised to protect the king, and a large ditch was dug by labourers who were paid for their effort. The Lithgow Palace was occupied by the English until 1314, until it was retaken by the Scots during Robert the Bruce's campaign. This was after defeating the English at the Battle of Bannockburn. A farmer named William Bunnock, along with his sons, recaptured Edward's fortress and raised it to avoid it being used again as an English garrison. A new manor house was built by the Scots kings and was used by both David II and Robert III. However, during an attack by the English, the house burned down in 1424. It was James I who initiated a new build in 1425 as a residence for the royal family. This is now the East Range of the present palace, which includes the main entrance into the building and the Great Hall. These works also included repairing St Michael's Parish Church to the south of Linlithgow Palace. A church has been on the site since 1138, originally built by David I. The north and south ranges would have been in construction around this time too. It was James I's grandson, James III, who continued to improve and expand the palace, which may have seen the completion of the South Range and the construction of the South West Corner Tower. And over the next 100 years, during the reigns of James IV, V and finally the VI, building and extending continued until eventually the North Range was completed in 1624.
It was during James IV's reign, when the palace was completed with the construction of the West Range around the early 1500s, and closing the rectangular courtyard. It was he who also designed the Grand Barbican to strengthen defences at the original entrance to the palace. James IV's wife, Margaret Tudor, watched out for her husband's return from the Battle of Flodden at the top of the North West Tower. He died at the battle in 1513 and the room now is known as Queen Margaret's Bower. Margaret gave birth to James V at Linlithgow Palace on the 10th of April in 1512. He became King of Scotland in 1513 at 17 months old. Around the late 1530s and early 1540s, James V employed a number of master masons to make considerable additions to several of the royal palaces, including Stirling Castle, Falkland Palace and Linlithgow Palace. He may have been influenced by the continental designs he had seen in France and one such mason, Thomas French. He also closed off the original east entrance and built a grand formal entrance in the south. This included an inner gatehouse and the outer gate entrance on the south range facing the town. This is magnificently decorated with four carved coat of arms of the chivalric orders of which James was a member. The Order of the Garter, the Order of the Thistle, the Order of the Golden Fleece and the Order of St Michael. At this time, James V commissioned the ornate fountain that stands as a centrepiece in the middle of the enclosed courtyard, now known as the King's Fountain. The palace was designed to be lived in and enjoyed, and improvements and renovations were constantly taking place during James's reign. This included adding stained glass in the chapel windows, a tennis court constructed in the garden and tapestries bought to decorate the interiors. James V died in 1542. This was six days after his daughter Mary was born at Linlithgow Palace on the 8th of December. During Mary Queen of Scots reign, there was little work continued at Linlithgow Palace as she never resided at the palace. She was sent to France for protection against the English King Henry VIII at the age of five and did not return to Scotland until August 1561. It was her son James VI, on her abdication, that succeeded the title King of Scotland after Mary's abdication in July 1567. James was raised at Stirling Castle thereafter and the Lithgow Palace by this time was said to be in a state of disrepair. James VI left Scotland to reside in London in 1603 after the Union of the Crowns. Little repairs or work was done to keep the castle in good repair and on the 6th of September 1607 the north range of the palace collapsed. 
It was, however, rebuilt between 1618 and 1624 in anticipation of the King's visit to Scotland in 1622, but he did not return. King James VI died in 1625. The last monarch to stay at Linlithgow Palace was Charles I in 1633 for his Scottish coronation. He only stayed at the palace for one night. By 1641, the palace was in a state of disrepair again. The third Earl of Linlithgow, George Livingston, occupied part of the North Range in 1648 as Keeper of the Castle. During the winter of 1650, Oliver Cromwell stayed at Linlithgow Palace. The last Royal Stuart to visit Linlithgow was Bonnie Prince Charlie in 1745. During his visit, it is said that he made the King's Fountain flow with wine. The remains that you can see today is what was left after troops under the Duke of Cumberland on pursuit of Bonnie Prince Charlie, who were fleeing from defeat at the Battle of Falkirk, accidentally set the palace ablaze in February 1746. Here they took refuge and set fires to keep warm. The blaze transformed the once magnificent palace into a roofless shell. Nowadays, you can visit the ground and first floors, and some of the basement areas are also accessible. It is possible to access the corner towers too. The palace passed into the care of HM Commissioners for Woods and Forests in 1832 and was passed to HM Office of Works in 1874. Major restoration work was carried out in the 1930s and the 1940s. Today, Linlithgow Palace is under the care of Historic Environment Scotland. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to visiting a castle near you. Bye!